Greetings Earthlings, today we're doing a semi versus series and comparing five different mic activators to see what the difference is in output level, if they impact the tone, and a whole bunch of stuff. So the five mic activators we're going to be looking at today are the Cathedral Pipes Durham, the unfortunately initialed Simply Sound SS1, oh that's rough, the Triton Audio Fethead, the Cloudlifter CL1, and the Radial Mic Boost. Now all of these devices are not called the same thing. The CL1 is called a mic activator, the SS1 is called a preamp, the Mic Boost is called a dynamic and ribbon mic enhancer, but they all perform the exact same function. And that function is to boost the output level of a low sensitivity dynamic or ribbon mic. And the way that these devices accomplish that is by taking the 48 volts of phantom power from your preamp or interface because dynamic mics and ribbon mics don't require 48 volts of phantom power and it converts those into clean gain boosts, ultimately increasing the output of your dynamic or ribbon mic. So all of these devices are made out of metal and have the exact same functional design, a mic input and a mic output. The only device here that's different is the Mic Boost or MC Boost, which does offer some actual functionality. It offers a variable impedance selection switch as well as a variable gain switch or dial. And I almost forgot to mention that throughout this intro, I've had the SM7B plugged into the 2i2 second gen with my input gain set at about 90 or 95%. And this is the level of audio that we've been getting. So let's go ahead and plug these guys in and see how it impacts the audio. Now I have the Cathedral Pipes Durham plugged in. I was able to drop my gain down to about 40 or 45%. This thing costs about $65. They state that it offers plus 25 decibels of gain. And it also has XMB technology from Cathedral Pipes. And that is used in their ribbon microphones to improve the signal to noise ratio, as well as provide a fixed impedance. Now I have the Simply Sound SS1 plugged in with my gain still at about 45 or 40%. I think we can drop it just a little bit more. This activator costs between $75 and $100. They state that it offers plus 27 decibels of gain and this is how it sounds. Now I have the Triton Audio Fethead in the chain. My gain is at about 35 or 40%, the same as the Simply Sound. This thing will set you back between 90 and 150 bucks, depending on when and where you buy it. It offers about plus 25 decibels of clean gain, and this is how it's been sounding. Now I have the Cloudlifter CL1 in the chain. My gain was bumped back up to about 45%. This thing costs about 150 bucks, also offers a gain boost of around plus 25 decibels, and this is what I've been using for about two or two and a half years now, and I have loved it so far, but this is how it sounds. Now I've added the mic boost into the chain, my input gain dropped back down to about 40%, my load setting is medium, and my level is at full. This thing will set you back about 200 bucks. It has a gain boost of around plus 25 decibels, and this is how it's been sounding. So first, I'm going to switch between the different load settings to see if it does impact the audio that we're getting. So we've been on medium. Now I have switched to the high load setting. And now I am on the low load setting, and this is how the audio sounds. Switching back to medium. For this test, I've been on the full gain setting, which outputs 100% of the audio. I'll switch to half, which obviously is going to output 50% of the audio. And we'll go ahead and switch up to vary, which is the variable setting, which activates this gain dial knob on the side. So you can dial in precisely the level of gain that you want to output. So if you plug this into a and a low sensitivity microphone, but the signal's too hot, you can roll it back with this variable gain dial, which is an amazing feature to have. Now let's jump to the demonstrations of the noise floor for each of these devices when the mic is set at a reasonable volume.
So there was one standout device here, and unfortunately it was in a negative way, and that was the Simply Sound SS1. This device seemed to introduce some kind of interference noise, which is pretty apparent during the line noise tests, and it also seems to color the audio a little bit in the mid frequencies. Now all these other devices did seem to have a pretty comparable performance, although the Mic Boost and CL1 performed slightly better in the line noise test. So with all that being said, if you have a low sensitivity dynamic mic, I'd absolutely recommend any of these devices except for the Simply Sound SS1. I think if you plan on doing a lot of traveling with these mic activators, the Cathedral Pipes or the Triton Audio Fethead would be a great option for you because they are so small and portable. Then if you're going to be in the studio, the Mic Boost or CL1 would be my recommendation. Obviously, if you're going to need variable impedance for impedance matching, or if you want variable gain settings, go with a Mic Boost. But if you don't need any of that, go with a CL1 and save yourself that 50 bucks. All right, guys, I guess that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, thumbs down. If you want to influence the gear that I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcastage. Cast your votes there. If you want more videos, subscribe by clicking the logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server link in the description and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.